congratulations on buying your Aussie Cobra Jetta. Here we're going to cover some of the basics on how your machine works and some general maintenance tips. With your machine you'll have an Aussie Jetta manual. Please take the time to read this, it's really important for your safety. Hamish Narenz from Aussie Pumps is going to take you through how to operate your machine and the basics of a high pressure jetting system. It's a Honda GX630 motor on this model. We either use the 630 or the 690 or the IGX800. They're all very similar in the way that they um, operate and the way you start them and shut them down. You have a throttle, key start, a choke, and an hour meter, and a low oil light. We also have a battery isolator or battery master switch, which disconnects the power from the battery to the, the engine when the machine's not in use. So the setup of the machine is you have an engine, that's your power pack, you have a reduction gearbox, and you have your heavy duty Bertolini piston pump. To get the right RPM from your pump, we use the reduction box. So basically that means the engine's running at one speed, the gearbox lowers that speed, so the pump runs at a slower speed than the engine. The idea of that is to get longer life out of your pump. Now on this side of the machine, you have your oil dipstick, you have your gearbox sight glass, and on this side of your pump, you have your pump sight glass. So you obviously have oil in your engine, in your gearbox, and in your pump. Three separate chambers. For your gearbox and your pump, the oil should be halfway up the sight glass. So you've got a red dot here, so you can see your oil level yep. and the same thing on this side. With the engine you have a low oil cutout so if you uh, have low oil in your engine your engine might start. All right so you need to always operate the machine on the level surface. Okay. For servicing and changing the oils you should uh, do an initial uh, first change after 50 hours and then we recommend every 100 hours or so. our water tank you connect your uh, town supply or your garden hose supply onto the tank here we recommend using a three-quarter inch supply hose not a not a standard half inch yep just to ensure that you're getting plenty of water to the tank so with piston pumps there's two things that hurt them one is no water in the head of the pump yep and the other is no oil in the back of the pump okay, okay? if yep. you've got water and you've got oil the pump's happy. They're coming out of your tank, before your water gets to your pump, it goes through a three quarter inch mesh strainer. But this stops any dirt getting to your pump. It needs to be checked daily and cleaned if necessary. Also, after finishing uh, using the machine, before you uh, transport it, so you finish your job, you're about to leave, the last thing you do is drain your tank. Right. If the tank's full of water, uh, you're driving down the road, the water's sloshing around, it will spill out of the tank. Below the tank is your pump. If the water gets spilled onto your pump, water sits in the fins, and then next time you run your machine, because the pump's fitted with a breather valve on top, it'll suck moisture into the pump, and that will turn your oil into a discolored milky color. Then you'll think you've got a big problem. With Unscrew the filter. Be careful not to move the filter or the gasket. If it's dirty, you can just wash it out. You can even wash it. The strainer and the gasket is in place. Yep. Then we just screw it back on. Your machine will come with the battery disconnected. Okay. So you need to connect your battery, obviously your negative to your negative terminal, and your positive for your positive terminal and they also come with terminal protective covers so once they're on it'll look like that when the battery is connected and live to your engine and the engine is running the engine is triple charging the battery back the more you use your machine the more charged it's going to stay in your battery 
We also recommend, say, once a month, um, that you put your battery on charge and charge it fully. If you're not using the machine very much and you haven't, say, used it for a couple of weeks, charge your battery before you go on site. If you do have to replace your battery, ensure that you get the same type and same size so it's matched to the machine. Yep. All right. This is your unloader valve, and that controls the direction of your water flow and the pressure of your machine. Now, that valve, as you can see, it's paint mark blue, that is factory set. You don't need to touch that. This valve here is your high pressure safety valve. Again, pre-factory set. What this does is, if something happens to your unloader valve and it fails to bypass the water, so you shut your valve off, yep. And for some reason it doesn't bypass and pressure is building up in the pump instead of something something blowing your safety valve will release so if you have water coming out your safety valve contact your yeah. oven so powering up your engine you obviously need to fill up the tank with fuel um, we recommend premium unleaded fuel now the fuel tank is fitted with a breather valve on top. You always might need to make sure that that breather valve, valve is open. Yes. Okay. And your fuel tap is on before starting. You have a large hose reel fitted on top of the unit, which consists of 60 meters of quarter inch sewer hose. It has a quick coupling, stainless steel quick coupling on the end of it, which basically should be connected when the machine's in transport. Right. Okay, so when you're driving down the road, you always have this connected so you don't lose your hose down the road. You have a locking pin up here, which locks your reel in place. Yep. Right. When the machine's in operation, always have the locking pin disconnected. Yep. Okay. When you're driving your vehicle or transporting the machine, always have it locked. Okay, but it's very important to have it disconnected when operating. Yep. Okay. The reason for that is if you have it locked and you're on and off your ball valve or on and off the ball valve on your mini reel as you're jetting, yep. the reel will be going backwards and forwards like this. Yep. Alright? If you keep operating the, operating the machine like that, you will damage your hose reel. Right. And the locking pin will, pin will eventually break. Yep. Okay, so always disconnect it. Yep. If you find when you're jetting that you're getting a lot of free spin, as in when you go off your valve, either on your machine or your mini reel, the hose free spools. On this side of the reel, there is a tensioner, an adjusting bolt here. Yep. Now, for safety, uh, your machine and your mini reel is fitted with a high pressure ball valve. With the ball valve and the handle in line with the hose, that is off. That is off, that is on. Okay? When your the machine is engaged, the valve is open and you're jetting, in the event of an emergency, it's much easier to push the valve down. Of course. Right. Okay, before you start your machine, pull your hose out, open your ball valve, disengage your reel so it's free spinning. Yes. Have no nozzle on the end of your hose, so it's just open and flow. Yes. All right. You have your water connected, your tank's full, you're ready to go. Come around the back of the machine, pull your choke on, full throttle, turn your key, and you'll have water hat coming out of your hose. Yep. Turn your choke off. Yep. And you can shut your valve. Yep. And the machine will go into what we call bypass mode, where the water is going through the pump and circulating back to your tank. Right. Your engine's also warming up at this time. So while that's happening, you can set up. So with your sewer hose, I just disconnect the lock. I'll pull the hose out. You can see at approximately one meter, we have 
tight. Then if we keep going, second meter we have the tape again. Right. Indication tape. Yep. And third meter, we have the tape again. This is so when the hose is down the drain and the machine is run, running, it's noisy, it's wet, you're focusing on your jetting. When you're pulling the hose out, you know where you're up to with right. your hose. So when you get to these indicators, your third meter mark, you shut your valve off. Yep. Okay, that stops water getting to the hose, getting to the coupling, getting to the nozzle. Yep. Then you're safe to pull the rest of the hose out. As well as your hose and your nozzles, you also get what we call the Mustang safety plate. The idea of this is you put this over your pit or your drain, you feed your hose through the plate, it's over your drain, then you connect your nozzle yep. and stick it down. drain cleaning nozzles and accessories that come with the unit as standard. Doesn't matter how good your machine is, if your nozzle is worn, the machine cannot operate how it should operate. Alright, so it's very important to take care of your nozzles and replace them as needed. In your kit, you get what we call the Predator Penetrator. Now this is basically your penetrating nozzle for your blockage. All right, so say you come to a drain, it's full of tree roots, it's totally blocked, you wanna punch a hole through it, you use this nozzle. Your four jet is cutting your hole and penetrating, and your three rear jets is propelling the nozzle down the drain. Negotiating nozzle, mm -hmm. this is a one forward, six rear. It has less power at the front, but more power at the back. This one is more used for flushing the pipe out, say if you've got a pipe that's Full of sand, full of silt, full of dirt. You put this on, and as you pull your hose back towards you, you're blowing all the dirt and muck yep. out into the pit. This is your turbo root mulching nozzle. Generally, this is what you use to cut the roots in a pipe. Okay, so uh, again, if you come to a pipe that's totally matted, totally full of tree roots, you punch a hole through first with your penetrator, then you pull your hose out. Connect your turbo root mulcher and put it back down the pipe. Um, you need to take good care of your couplings because you don't want your, ho your nozzles coming off. You don't want your nozzles being lost down the drain. There's a certain way that the nozzles should be connected to your coupling. You pull the collar back on the coupling so you can expose the ball bearings. You push the tail in and you click it forward. And I spin the nozzle or the coupling to ensure it's locked on. And last but not least, you have your compressor nozzle. So you might find that you're, you're doing a 100 mil pipe or even a, a 50 mil pipe and you're using your mini reel and you've got a bend that you just can't get round. What you can do uh, to shorten the rigid piece on your hose, which is your nozzle and your hose tail. Okay, so you have a rigid piece here. You can see the leg there, it's 100 mil, say. Yep. All right, that doesn't bend. Yep. Now that has to get around the corner. Yep. So what you can do is unscrew your coupling here, a spanner on there and a spanner on there, take your coupling off, screw your nozzle straight on, and you suddenly, you're down to 50 mil safe. You can have your machine running with your valve closed. That means we've got pressure to here. Machine's ready to go. Uh, we want to connect our gun, disengage your hose reel, pull your hose out, connect your coupling, again spin it, make sure it's locked on so it's not going to come off. Yep. Now your gun, your trigger gun is just like your ball valve here. So once I open this valve and let the water into the reel, into the hose, I'm going to get water to the gun, yep. but it's not going to go past the gun. So I'll open my valve. I've now got pressure to my gun. I can now engage the trigger and start cleaning. Okay, so when you finish jetting, 
you've uh, shut your valve off, you've taken your nozzle off, you've wound your hose up, but the machine is still running. Okay, correct procedure is drop your revs to an idle, turn your key off, disengage your master switch, stops the power coming from your battery to your engine. Yep. Come round to your hose and release your pressure. Okay. We're just going to run through um, how to set up the mini reel with your Aussie Cobra water jetter. Firstly, you disconnect your locking pin on your main reel, pull out the desired hose length, connect to your mini reel, always make sure you spin the collar on the coupling to sure it's locked on. If you're using a B-Class machine, you will have a hose restraint which will actually lock on to the clip here, uh, just as a uh, secondary backup. Disconnect your mini reel outlet and your locking pin. Now you can connect your nozzle Obviously all of this with that is without the machine running. You can connect your nozzle, stick it in your drain at least three metres. You have your hose indicators on your hose again, one, two and three metres. So stick it into the three metre point before you start your machine and engage your mini reel.